In this example, I'd like to take a look at the mean value theorem for integrals and apply it to this function f of x equals 1 over 2x squared. And we're going to do so over this closed interval 1 to 4. So the prerequisite we need to check out first is this needs to be continuous over this entire region, okay? So your function here, 1 over 2x squared, the only time that that's not going to be continuous is when x equals 0, and that will be in the form of a vertical asymptote for that discontinuity. But x equals 0 is not in this region, so we are good to go. Okay, so looking at this mean value theorem, this left side, remember, is going to be a definite integral, and when I solve that definite integral, it's going to give me an area. And that area is going to be bound above by the graph of this function and below by the x-axis. So let's go ahead and take a look at that graph and also what that region is going to look like. Okay, what the right side of this mean value theorem for integrals says is that we're going to be multiplying two things here in order to get the same value as this area. And this f of c is actually a y value, and this b minus a is an x value, and this uh, x b minus a is the width of this closed interval. And this y value here, this f of c, is actually the average value of the function over this region. And the mean value theorem guarantees the existence of some c value, which is going to play as an x value. And this c value is somewhere in this region, and that's what we're going to be looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by actually working this definite integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over 2 x squared with respect to x. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to bring this one half out front. And then I'm going to make this x squared, which is in the denominator, as an x to the negative 2. So that's in the numerator now. So let's go ahead and integrate this. So we have one half times, and the integral here, so we have x to the negative 2. I'm going to add 1 to that power, so I have negative 1. And then I'm going to divide by that new power, so dividing by negative 1 just does that right there. And we're going to be doing this from 1 to 4. Okay, so if you wanted to, we could maybe put that 1 half back through or kind of polish this up a little bit. So really it's going to be a negative 1, so negative 1 over, and it looks like 2x, because this negative exponent actually is going to put it back down on the denominator with that 2 from 1 to 4. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So it looks like we have negative 1 over 2 times 4 minus negative 1 over 2 times 1. Okay, so negative 1 eighth, and the two negatives, we'll do a little swoosh swoosh and make that a plus. So negative 1 eighth, what, over, uh, say adding 1 half to that. So we should have 3 eighths when we're said and done. So this 3 eighths now is the area, so we're saying that that's the left side of this equation. So when we write this, we'll say 3 eighths is equivalent to sum f of c value times b minus a. Well, we know what the b and the a are because we have the 4 and the 1 here for our region. So 3 eighths equals f times, or f of c times 4 minus 1. So this 3 eighths equals f of c times 3. So I can multiply both sides of this equation by one-third. So the 3 and the one-third cancel, leaving just the f of c. You'll notice also these 3's cancel, so it leaves me with one-eighth. Okay, so what I'm saying here, the average value of the function is one-eighth, and that's this f of c right here. But I'm not looking for the f of c, I'm looking for the actual c value. So I'm going to take this one-eighth, and I'm going to set it equal to my function, 1 over 2 x squared. And when I solve for this x, that's going to give me that c value I'm looking for. Okay, so we have 1's in both of the numerators, so really I'm just interested in setting 8 equal to 2x squared. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So I'll have 4 equals x squared. 
And then let's take the square root of both sides. So we'll have plus or minus 2 equals that x. Well, two separate values, a positive 2 and a negative 2, but only one of those values plays nicely in our interval here. We only care about the positive 2 because the negative 2 is outside the interval. So this c value that we're looking for is positive 2. Okay, so going back up here, what this all means is we have this area, and that area was 3 eighths. And that's equivalent to some rectangle. If we take this area and kind of smush them down into a rectangle, we have the height of the rectangle, which is the average value of the function, f at this c value, which was 2, and multiply that by the width of the rectangle, which was the width of this region. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like graphically to wrap this up.